dude, you're such a great swimmer. My friends cheered for me as I showed off my swimming expertise. How did you learn to swim so well? The same way I learned to do every other sport so well. Your parents? Yeah. It's too bad that all that sports expertise is wasted on a fat boy like you. My dad suddenly materialized from somewhere, forcing us all out of the pool. Why don't you go show off your cake-eating skills to your friends instead? That will explain your weight, don't you think? Dad, I don't even eat cake. Whatever. You know, I'll love to eat some cake. Damien said, making me and Francis burst into laughter. Fine, let's go to the kitchen. I'll have the chef prepare something nice for you. Awesome! Sitting in the kitchen on top of a table was my little sister, Nadia. She was always in the kitchen with the chef. Her body was stained with different ingredients. It looked like she'd just finished painting a house. Nadia, not you in the kitchen again. I smiled at her. <laughs> Bolin, Damien, Francis. Yay, you guys are all right on time. I just baked this amazing cake. You? The chef asked with a mischievous grin on his face. Well, I came up with the idea for a banana mint cake and it turned out better than I expected. Thanks to Chef Augustine for doing most of the work, of course. And you losing most of the ingredients on your body! Our chef winked and we all laughed. Well, do you guys want a slice or no? Do we? Damien and Francis asked in unison, diving into the slices our chef offered them two seconds later. I used to love eating cakes more than anything, but now they just gave me PTSD. I always remember my parents telling me how eating anything like that would make me fatter than I already was, and it still makes me scared to disappoint them. Funny enough, I wasn't even that fat. I just didn't have the exact supermodel stature that both my parents had and wished for their kids. According to them, they had high hopes for me when my mom got pregnant. They thought that they were finally going to produce an heir for their legacy and a supermodel for their company. Someone who looked just like them and could take over the business without much stress. Unfortunately, I bounced out of the womb as a chubby baby, breaking the scale on my way out. Saying that my parents were disappointed would be an understatement. In their opinion, this was a problem and it had to be fixed. From the second I could eat normal food and aged up a little bit, I was given a personal trainer and dietitian as a birthday gift. I was forced to learn almost every kind of sport to lose the extra fat, but nothing ever worked. Not my diets, not my sports activities, and definitely not my personal training. No matter what I did, I just remained chubby and my parents hated this. When our family doctors advised my parents to cut me some slack because they could end up really hurting me if they didn't, they decided to simply give up on me and try again. This time, an even chubbier baby, my little sister Nadia bounced out of my mom's belly and beat my breaking scale record. Sad and distraught, my parents decided to keep pushing. They weren't going to give up. Nadia was gifted two personal trainers, dietitians, and sports teachers on different birthdays. Instead of focusing on why the meals that the dietitian was recommending were supposed to make people lose weight, all Nadia cared about was how they were made, how they tasted, the secret ingredients in the meals, and how to make the meals even better. Nadia was always on Chef Augustine's tail. Make something special for me, Chef Foggy. What did you put inside this cake? It tastes so exotic. Can you teach me how to make ice cream? What is pizza? My friends are always eating it, but you never make it here. Can you make it for me? One day, Chef Augustine caved and decided to make pizza for me and my sister. Unfortunately, our mom caught us that day and fired him on the spot. We threatened to leave with him, but she and dad just laughed. And what makes you think that'll bother us? Wow, pure evil. Like and subscribe if you don't want your parents to ever act like mine. Chef Augustine was thrown out, and a new, stricter chef was brought in. This chef was so strict and disciplined that she even refused to make cheat meals for my parents, her employers. She told them that in a family of models, everyone had to eat healthily and stay fit. No cheating or favorites allowed. Long story short, she was also thrown out and Chef Augustine was brought back with a warning. He refused to return if his salary wasn't increased and my parents obliged. We were so happy to see him when he came home that we jumped on him to hug him and stained his white clothes in the process. Oh my. No, 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 we stained your immaculate wear. Nadia almost cried. Our chef laughed. 
<laughs> Don't be silly, guys. Stain it all you want for today. I'm so happy to be reunited with you guys. <laughs> we laughed in excitement. Well, well, well. If it isn't the chubby crew. A voice said, spoiling all our fun and forcefully bringing me back to the present. Fiosa, my sister and I said in contempt. Well, why am I not surprised that you guys are in the kitchen, binging on cake? What's wrong with cake? Or the kitchen. Or being together. Oh, binging! Damien said with a mouthful of cake, making all of us laugh, including the chef and the kitchen maids burst out laughing. To say the least, Diosa was irritated. She rolled her eyes and stormed out of the kitchen with her usual final sentence. Rugrats, no wonder your parents hate you. Diosa, our adopted sister, was created from pure evil. When my parents discovered that the problem was more from them than it was from us, they were incapable of not giving birth to kids that weren't chubby. The psycho award-winning supermodel but terrible parents decided to adopt a daughter who already had the genetics they wanted. Talk about being born lucky. It didn't bother my psycho parents that the character of the child they adopted was similar to that of an evil witch. Her inner beauty didn't concern them. All they cared about was the outer beauty she had. Diosa was a stunning model. Perfect face, perfect height, hair, skin, teeth, eyes, legs, and every other detail you can think of. It was a shame that her personality was the exact opposite of all these things, but it wasn't only her fault. My parents helped turn her into the person she became. We are the luckiest parents in the world to have such a beauty as our daughter. Thank you for choosing us. No, Dad, thank you for choosing me. Who would have ever thought that me, a girl with no family living in an orphanage, would end up living with such loving parents? Billionaires that are happy to take care of me and train me in the art of modeling. The only thing I've ever dreamed of since being born. I am the luckiest human in the world to be working as a model and with such lovely parents for that matter. Oh, stop it. I just can't because I'm telling the truth. If only these two fools, Bolin and Nadia, felt the same way you feel about modeling. If only they appreciated the art. But no matter, we have you and you're better than any one of them. We will give you whatever you ask for. All you have to do is ask. Thank you, Mom. I love you both. We, we love, love you, you too, too, baby. baby. My parents had never told me and Nadia that they loved us for once in our lifetime. When Diosa started winning multiple awards and competitions, our parents practically forgot that they had other children besides Diosa. At first, we kind of detested Diosa, but after hating her for years, we realized that it wasn't her fault. It was our parents. We ignored our parents' negligence and had to take care of ourselves, physically and emotionally. I tried my best to always give positive and reassuring words to my little sister, Nadia, and I think it worked because Nadia turned out to be one of the sweetest humans in the world. With the full support of our parents, Diosa did her very best to make our lives as miserable as possible. She knew that our parents loved her more than us, so she did whatever she could to remind us of that every single day. She played pranks on us all the time and we reported this to our parents, but who do you think our parents believed? You guessed it right, Diosa. Somehow, in a way that made absolutely no sense, Diosa was able to convince our parents that we were the ones playing pranks on her, and they believed her. Since we were alleged pranksters already, we decided to do due diligence. We started pranking Diosa. With the help of our friends, we were able to hurt her in ways she couldn't even imagine. In my opinion, three out of all our pranks were the absolute best. For the first one, we made Diosa's heels break during a catwalk in front of a large audience. Instead of just removing the broken shoes and walking barefoot like we expected, the idiot tried to keep walking with the broken heels and ended up breaking her feet. She couldn't walk for a month. The second one was the old dye and shampoo trick. Diosa's hair was bright green by the time she came out of the bathroom. And the third one was the best. We knew she was wearing undies and wasn't going to be totally embarrassed, so we set up a hidden fan in a way that blew away her wraparound dress while she was catwalking. She was wearing a short gown inside, but was still mortified. There was absolutely no way to trace these pranks back to us, but once Diosa accused us of the pranks, our parents believed her as usual and threw us out of the main house. We were relocated to the guest house in another building, 
but still in the same compound, so Diosa could have the whole mansion to herself without any disturbance. After this occurrence, it became very clear to us that we could never win over our parents. We weren't interested in the modeling industry anyway, so it was fine. There was no need to keep trying to please people who couldn't be pleased, so we decided to focus on ourselves and our careers. I was very good with tech stuff and decided to start a software development company, while my beautiful plump sister Nadia loved everything that concerned food. She loved creating new, magical dishes and her dream was to become a world-class chef. Luckily, Chef Augustine was always secretly there to help her build up her skills. He was the father we never had. I hardly ever celebrated my birthday, so I kind of forgot what day it was. I was turning 20 already and life had turned around for both I and Nadia. My company had grown so much that my name and pictures were in different magazines all over the world. And Nadia's cooking YouTube channel was booming. She had written a best-selling cookbook and had already amassed a million followers. Our guest house was filled with equipment that had been given to Nadia for free as a result of brand deals and sponsorships. We were living the life and planning to move out as soon as possible. It was funny, but our parents were even making efforts to reach out to us now and inviting us to the mansion now and then, just because things were going well for us. Typical. Bolin, happy birthday! Nadia and Chef Augustine entered my office with a small cake. I laughed because I didn't even realize that it was my birthday already. Guys, you know I don't eat cake. I laughed again. I know, but please try this one for me. Chef Augustine pleaded. I agreed and burst into tears after tasting it because this was the cake I was eating when my parents insulted me for being chubby and made me fear eating cake. The cake was so good. Chef Augustine knew about this and comforted me. After that, I started loving cakes again. Diosa came to our guest house one day while Nadia was shooting a cake making tutorial for her YouTube channel. Um, what do you want? To learn, duh. Diosa shoved me and walked to the kitchen. Nadia allowed her to stay and watch the tutorial despite my constant reminders that it wasn't a good idea. After a few minutes of filming, Nadia excused herself, went to pee, came back and rounded up the video. She cut the baked cake and shared it, but Diosa refused to eat, saying, Cakes are only for fat, jobless people like you guys, before storming out. I stored my slice in the fridge because I had to round up on work first while Nadia ate hers immediately. To my surprise, Nadia fainted immediately after eating her cake. I rushed her to the hospital just in time and the doctors were able to save her life. They informed us that Nadia had been poisoned. Before I could react in any way, Chef Augustine suddenly arrived at our hospital room and turned on the TV. An angry mob filled with Nadia's followers was protesting in front of our house gate. Apparently, Diosa didn't realize that the YouTube tutorial was actually a live one. The camera was still on and recording when she poisoned the cake mix. All of Nadia's followers were there to see it. Diosa was arrested and charged with attempted manslaughter. Our parents begged us to drop the charges for their sake, and we did, but immediately moved out to an unknown location with Chef Augustine, never to come back again. Before leaving, we asked Diosa why she tried to kill us, and she said that she wanted to be the only successful one in the family. She was deranged. I'm glad that my mad family is finally behind me. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed my story. It really helps our channel out. Thank you. A secret room? I would never have imagined. What else could my parents be hiding from me? I was set to explore when I heard my mom scream. Paul! I ran out of the basement to see her hovering over my sister's unconscious body. My name is Paul. My family is not regular. As you might have deduced, my parents were extreme disciplinarians. I'm talking food, leisure time restrictions, and even sending their children to live in the basement as punishment. This was how I discovered the secret room. My sisters and I are introverts, a personality obviously influenced by the kind of upbringing we had. Investing solely in my studies kept me in my dad's good books most of the time. I did this because my punishments were always the worst. That didn't last long. Some of my classmates were jealous. They couldn't fathom how I always topped the class. Then the rumors began. I had been stealing test questions. My calm look was just a facade. On the day things fell apart, I was in a biology class when the school secretary called me to report to the principal's office. 
The principal had gotten wind of the fake news and I was summoned by the school's disciplinary panel. I watched in despair as my classmates testified against me one after the other. It broke my heart, but I didn't have friends so no one could vouch for me. My class teacher looked betrayed. I was the student she would always brag about and now the pride was being replaced by shame. My dad's eyes screamed disappointment, disdain written all over his face. How could you bring such shame to this family? From the corner of my eyes, I could see my mom shake her head in disgust. The apple is truly never far from the tree, she said under her breath. I wondered what she was talking about. You'll move into the basement until school asks you to resume. One evening, my siblings and I got too engaged in a movie and we didn't realize that it was past our bedtime. Why is the television still turned on? My mom asked as she turned on the lights. I was about to get defensive when the living room clock struck 12. I didn't realize it was that late. Turn it off and go to bed. It's late. We were stunned and watched in fear as she strolled into the kitchen for her regular night rituals. The next morning, we thanked her for not reporting us to dad and she nodded. By evening, my dad called all five of us to the living room. Mom was sitting beside him. That was a moment of realization. The five of you seem to get more reckless by the day, said dad. And Paul, you keep forgetting that when I'm gone, you will be the man of this house. If you don't keep the house rules now, how will you control the home when I'm no more? I'm sorry, sir. Those were the only words I could form. I felt betrayed. You can reflect on your deeds while you serve your punishment. The girls will have their leisure time ceased for a week. As for you, Paul, for spearheading this rebellion, no leisure time for two weeks with a cereal-only diet. My punishment was also the worst. Almost immediately, I started moving the basic stuff into the basement. By basic stuff, I meant my books, the only luxury I'd be given access to for the next few weeks. While taking out the last set, I spotted my father at the balcony staring into space. Bracing myself, I walked to him to ask him what the problem was that he had with me. The doubt started when my sister suggested that I might be adopted. Their proof was that I always received the worst punishment for anything we did together, so I had to be adopted. I think mom and dad adopted you because they wanted a male child and you remind them daily of how they can't have one. Samantha, my eldest sister, announced one day as she strolled into my room for our weekly siblings meeting. True. Have you noticed how mom looks at him? Leah replied with a smirk on her face. Leah was the last of the four girls and three years older than me, but we acted like twins. Although I laughed off the conversation, it never left my head. What is it? My father's baritone pierced my thoughts. Why are you staring at me and saying nothing? D -d Dad, I muttered, am I adopted? <sighs> the look on my father's face was new. I'd never seen him surprised. My sisters and I had concluded that our parents had no feelings. Where did that come from? You always punish me more than the girls and it's not fair. I had tears in my eyes now. He smiled. Let's walk while I tell you a story. Not the answer I expected, but okay. There was a filthy rich family many years ago, and they had issues conceiving. After so many years of trying, they had a daughter, and that was the only child born. Being absentee parents, money made up for all they couldn't be, allowing the child to mix with the wrong crowd and finally becoming reckless. At 17, she'd engaged in all forms of vices, drugs, alcohol, partying. It was during one of those parties that her life changed. Drunk as usual, she got into a fight with a stranger who, unfortunately, did not survive a blow to the head. She was arrested and, as usual, her parents' money came to the rescue. Every official on the case was bribed and she was released. The incident got her sober and she wondered how differently her life would have played out if her parents did not have the financial capacity to spare her prison. She swore never to allow her children to go down the same path. She went to rehab and became better. By the time Dad ended his tale, we had gotten to the basement. Confused about what that had to do with my question, I nodded regardless. My mind was still wandering when Dad walked away. I started cleaning up the basement. It was to be my safe place for the next few weeks, so I had to make it worthwhile. The paint on the wall was horrible to look at, but a section looked far worse. I decided to set up my reading table against it. There was no way anyone would fall asleep staring at that wall. When the table hit the wall, it made a hollow sound. I couldn't help but tap on the patterns and realize they were movable. It seemed to be a puzzle. I pushed my table aside and got to work. 
I wondered what would happen when I finished the puzzle. If it was like any of the movies, then it had to be a secret room. A secret room I would never have imagined. What else could my parents be hiding from me? I was set to explore when I heard my mom scream. Paul! I ran out of the basement to see her hovering over my sister's unconscious body. Oh yes, that's how we got here. We rushed my older sister, Sheila, to the hospital. The doctor said something about stress and needing proper care. This made me very angry. Sheila had been looking pale for weeks and my parents didn't even notice. Their discipline pattern was what got her here in the first place. They were too busy trying to make perfect people out of us. Now, more than ever, I was determined to know what sat behind that wall. Sheila was admitted for three weeks and this gave me enough time to discover what was going on in the basement. On the third day, I finished the puzzle and the walls opened. Yes, I was right, a secret room. It housed a lot of boxes that contained files. There was a lot to go through, but I was ready for it. The more files I went through, the angrier I became. How could my parents hide such things from us? It was unfair. We deserved to know. I didn't know how to approach my parents, so I crawled into my shell and stayed there. My parents seemed to have noticed my change in countenance. When they walked into my room the day after Sheila was discharged, I was surprised. Mom and Dad usually didn't care about our feelings. They only cared about their version of right. Are you okay? Mom asked. I responded with a cold stare. Not like you care, I said inaudibly. We are your parents, Paul. You can always come to us. Yes, we don't want you kids growing apart, regardless of whatever happens. We are still family. As they walked out, I watched my mother carefully and tears filled my eyes. My family, however broken we were, had rituals, one of which was having breakfast together on Saturday. Everyone had varying schedules during the week and hence had breakfast at different times. This Saturday, I wasn't looking forward to it, but it came anyway, and I helped mom set the table. I kept pushing my food around the plate, and my taste buds seemed to be damaged. Sheila, no phone at the table. My father's shout brought my wandering mind back. My sister was shaking with fear while dad glared at her. He was about to make a move for her phone when I screamed, Stop it! Everyone stared in shock. Stop it, dad, I went on. We are not you. Stop projecting your insecurities on us. We don't deserve to be treated this way. It's wrong. Punishing us like this changes nothing. You're right, son. I'm sorry. I just want you kids to turn out better. My bad leg is a good enough reminder of my reckless life. My dad burst into tears, stood up and limped away. Everyone stared in confusion. There was indeed a rich family long ago with a spoiled child, but it wasn't a girl. It was a son. That son was my dad. He tried to use us to make up for his past mistakes, hence the disciplinary actions. I spent all those days in the secret room I discovered, learning about my family's past. I got the worst punishment because, like dad, I was the only son. He didn't want me to go down the same path that nearly destroyed him. The days that followed were cold. The atmosphere in the house was so tense, it got everyone speaking and walking with extreme caution. I spent most of my days inside my room, even though my parents had become lenient with us since the Saturday breakfast incident. We have an appointment with the therapist by 4 p.m. this evening. My mom casually announced one morning. My family won't be broken, not on my watch. Yes, this would be good for us. There's a lot to fix. Dad nodded in agreement. It was weird as we all sat together on the couch at the therapist's office. This was the closest we had ever been. Who wants to speak first? The therapist asked. The silence that followed was awkward. Our parents hate us, Leah said. What makes you say that? Their cruelty sent my sister to the hospital. She was admitted for three weeks, and they make my brother sleep in the basement all the time. It feels like we're living in the military barracks, Sheila chipped in. With the training we get at home, we could qualify for the military. One after the other, we all aired our grievances, but nothing could have prepared us for what my mom was about to say. I lost my only brother about 20 years ago. He got into a fight one night at a club, but my family could never get justice for my brother. The murderer's parents were rich, so they paid off the case. I pledged my life to get justice for my brother and proceeded to marry his killer. My plan was to kill him slowly and inherit his family's money as compensation for my brother's death. This had to be a coincidence, right? My mom couldn't be talking about this marriage, right? Over the years, I watched this man punish himself for his past. It broke my heart so much, 
and I couldn't help but fall in love with him. This time, she was looking at my dad, who seemed like he'd just seen a ghost. He looked like he was about to faint. Then, he went on his knees to apologize to my mom, but she wouldn't let him. Mom pulled him into a hug, which my siblings and I joined in. We spent what was left of the session hugging and crying. Other sessions followed and we got better as individuals and as a family. Sometimes I wonder how our lives would have still been had I never discovered that secret room. I took off my headphones and switched off my computer. I needed a break and I needed something to eat. I headed out of my room and was about to go downstairs to the kitchen when I heard some giggling coming from my sister's room. I smiled to myself. This is going to be fun. Without knocking, I barged straight into my sister's room. Her friends all stopped talking and looked at me in surprise. What do you want, Jason? Oh, you know, I just thought I'd have a little chat with you and your friends. I could tell my sister was suspicious. What do you want to chat about? Oh, I just thought that your friend Mark might like to know something. My sister's face started turning bright red. Get out of here, Jason. I mean it. Oh, don't worry. I will. But first, did you know Laura has a crush on you, Mark? Mark began looking really uncomfortable. Really, it's true. She's always talking about you, aren't you, Laura? Laura started screaming at me. I hate you, Jason. Get out of here or I'm going to tell mom. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll leave you two lovebirds alone. I walked out of the room. I could hear Laura slamming the door behind me, but I just laughed to myself. It was so funny embarrassing my younger sister. If you're surprised by this, you're not going to believe what I tell you at the end of this video. I went downstairs to the kitchen and made myself a sandwich. I suppose I should have felt a bit sorry for being mean to Laura, but that's what older brothers do to their sisters, isn't it? I had played pranks on Laura for as long as I could remember. One time I balanced a bucket of water on the top of her bedroom door. It was so funny. I waited outside my room for her to come out. You should have seen the look on her face when the water came pouring down over her head. She was soaked from head to toe. Jason, you are so mean. I've spent ages getting ready for this party. And now look at me. I just laughed. You have to admit, it is funny. Ugh. Laura just stormed back into her room and slammed the door behind her. Laura was such an easy target. It was too hard to resist pranking her. One of the worst things I did to her was when it was her best friend Julia's birthday. She was having a big party and she told me to tell Laura to be at her house at 8 o'clock and to wear her best dress. Now, you're probably thinking that I didn't tell Laura about the party. But no, that would have been too easy. Instead, I told Laura that the party was fancy dress and everyone had to dress up in an animal costume. When Laura arrived at Julia's house, the party was in full swing. As she walked into the room dressed as a big brown bear, everyone stopped and stared at her. Then the whole room broke out into laughter. Laura, why are you dressed as a bear? It's a fancy dress party, isn't it? No, no, of course it isn't. Didn't Jason tell you I said to wear your best dress? Laura's face fell in dismay. No, no he didn't. When she got home, she was furious with me. You ruined my night. Everyone was laughing at me. How am I ever going to live this down? I just giggled to myself. It was so much fun playing tricks on Laura. It was a couple of weeks after the night I had told Mark that Laura had a crush on him and I was walking along the school corridor trying to think of something else that I could prank Laura with. Suddenly, as I turned the corner, I spotted a beautiful girl walking towards me. My heart literally leapt out of my chest. I'd never seen anyone so gorgeous in all of my life. I had never believed in love at first sight before, but when I saw her, I knew she was the one for me. Even though my heart was beating like mad and my stomach was full of butterflies, I knew that I couldn't let the opportunity go. So, I took a deep breath and walked over to her. Hi there, I'm Jason. Hi. You're new here, aren't you? I haven't seen you around before. Yes, it's my first day today. What's your name? Katie. Well, Katie, I'd be happy to show you around. That's if you'd like me to. I waited for what seemed like an eternity. Then she gave me a cute little smile. Sure, that would be great. Thank you. So I spent the rest of the day introducing Katie to everyone and showing her where each classroom was and where to go for lunch. At the end of the day, when the school bell rang, I went to say goodbye to her. Thank you for showing me around today. You made my first day here really easy. I guess I'll see you tomorrow? Yes, definitely. And, uh, uh... Yes? I mean, uh, well, we could also hang out. 
outside of school, if you want to. Are you asking me out on a date? Um, well, yes, I guess I am. She laughed at my <laughs> nervousness. I would love to go on a date with you. My heart started soaring and my head nearly exploded. I couldn't believe she had said yes. As I walked home from school, I couldn't help but have a beaming smile on my face. We arranged to go out on that Friday night for a pizza. But when Friday came, I was a nervous wreck. I stood in front of the mirror in my bedroom trying on outfit after outfit. I had no idea what to wear. I didn't want to go looking like a dork. I had to make a good impression. I just couldn't make my mind up, so in the end, I asked Laura to help me. Laura, Laura. What? Come here. What for? I need your help. You're not going to prank me again, are you? No, no, honestly. Are you sure? Yes, I promise. For a split second, the thought did enter my head that it would have been really funny if I had set up something to prank Laura with. But then again, she probably wouldn't have helped me if I had done that. Okay, what is it? You have to help me decide what to wear. Laura looked at me in shock. What? You want my advice? Yes, I have a date tonight and I really want to impress this girl. I just can't decide what to wear. I thought for a minute that Laura would be annoyed and not want to help me. But to my surprise, she was really nice. You should definitely wear the blue shirt. It matches the color of your eyes and makes you look really handsome. Thank you, Laura. That's a lovely thing to say. You're welcome. Laura left my room and I finished getting ready. The date with Katie couldn't have gone any better. We never stopped laughing and chatting. It was so easy with her. It was like I had known her forever. At the end of the night, I walked her home. This was so much fun, wasn't it? Yes, I had a really good time. Listen, the new Spider-Man movie is on at the cinema. Do you fancy going to see it tomorrow? Sure, that sounds great. I'll come pick you up at about 6 o'clock. Okay, see you tomorrow. As I walked home from Katie's house, I had never felt happier. I wanted to run and shout and tell everyone how much I was in love with her. But instead, I just walked along with a stupid grin on my face. When I got home, Laura was waiting for me. How did the date go? It was brilliant. Thank you so much for helping me decide what to wear. Are you going to see her again? Yes, I am taking her to the movies tomorrow night. Wow, you must be keen. I am. She's the most amazing girl I've ever met. I'm happy for you, Jason. Thank you, Laura. The next day seemed to drag by so slowly. I couldn't take my eyes off the clock. I thought that 6 o'clock would never come around, but eventually it did. I knocked on Katie's door and she opened it with a big smile. Hi, Jason. Wow, Katie, you look stunning. Thank you. You look good too. We got to the movies, bought some popcorn and took our seats. The movie began and we settled down to watch it. About halfway through, I decided to take my chance. I lifted my arm, put it around Katie's shoulder and pulled her into a hug. She leaned her head on my shoulder. But then, all of a sudden, she pushed me away. Ew! What is that smell? You stink! I was so shocked. I lifted my arm and smelled my armpit. Oh my god, it's true. I smell terrible. I was mortified. I couldn't believe it. How embarrassing. I'm so sorry, Katie. This has never happened to me before. I must have been in a rush and forgot to use my deodorant. I promise, it will never happen again. It's okay. But even though Katie was nice about it, the whole evening was ruined. I couldn't go anywhere near her because I knew she would be feeling sick from the smell of me. I thought that she would never want to see me again. But thankfully, she agreed to another date. Before the date, I made sure I had a really long shower. I used tons of soap. There was no way I was going to risk a repeat performance of our last date. As I walked up to Katie's house, I felt confident that nothing could spoil our date. Oh, how wrong I was. The minute Katie opened the door, her face fell and she screwed up her nose. Oh my god! Jason, you stink again! In fact, you smell even worse than on our last date! I was so confused, but I took an hour-long shower. I used loads of soap. I have no idea how I can be so smelly. I'm sorry. I think we had better postpone this date. Okay, I understand. It won't happen again, I promise. But unfortunately, it did. It didn't matter how much I showered or how much soap I used. I couldn't stop my terrible B.O. I tried hundreds of different products, but none of them worked. Eventually, it all became too much for Katie. I'm sorry, Jason. I don't think we can date anymore. Not if you can't get your body odor under control. It's okay. I understand. I was distraught, but I couldn't blame Katie. In fact, I totally understood where she was coming from. Even I couldn't stand the smell of me. It was disgusting. I'd never smelled anything so bad in my life. 
That night, I lay in bed fretting over my BO problem. What am I going to do about it? This is ruining my life. Suddenly, a noise broke me from my thoughts. What's that? Is it a burglar? I crept out of my room and into the hallway. There's someone in the bathroom. I crept slowly and quietly towards the bathroom door. There was definitely someone in there. I pushed open the door, expecting to see a burglar trying to climb through the window or something. But to my shock, it was only Laura. Laura, what are you doing in here in the middle of the night? That's when I noticed the guilty look on her face. I noticed that she was holding something behind her back. Laura, what have you got in your hand? Nothing. Show me. No. I mean it, Laura. Show me what you've got in your hand. Slowly, she took her hand from behind her back and showed me the bottle she was holding. What is that? She hesitated for a minute. It's skunk spray. It's what? (laughs) She started laughing. (laughs) I've been putting skunk spray on your soap. The more you wash, the smellier you become. I was furious. I couldn't believe what she had done to me. So that's why soap didn't work on me? You've ruined my life. I was so angry with her, I started screaming and lunged at her. The next thing I knew, we were rolling around on the bathroom floor screaming at each other. I hate you. You ruined my chance with Katie. Well, it serves you right. You have pulled so many pranks on me over the years. Now I have got you back. Ah, you're going to regret this, I promise you. Suddenly, the bathroom door opened and my mom walked in. That's enough, you two. What on earth is going on? It's her. She ruined my date with Katie. Well, he deserves it. He is always playing pranks on me. He told Mark that I secretly had a crush on him. I was so embarrassed. Come on now. You two are brother and sister. You shouldn't be mean to each other. Now I want you both to make up. I looked at Laura. Truce? Truce. That's better. Now get back to bed. Both of you. It's late. Sorry, Jason. Sorry, Laura. I went back to my room and lay on my bed. If she thinks she's going to get away with this, she is wrong. I need to come up with the biggest prank to get my revenge. Any ideas? Comment them down below.